Hello, good evening everyone. Tonight on Business Live, ahead of the 2023 budget presentation, the Institute of Economic Affairs is proposing a radical tax revenue mobilization that will show up the country's tax in relation to the size of the economy to 15 or 16 percent. When we borrow, eh, we have to use part of it to pay, cover the recurrent expenditure that I mentioned, those items. Because if they take 107% of your revenue. You don't have enough revenue even to cover that. Also, stakeholders in the industry sector want a review of government's fiscal measures in 2023 budget to ease the cost of production. We'll hear from auditing and accounting firm KPMG. They recognize that the government itself needs to also continue uh, to mobilize as much revenue. There has to be a trade-off or a balance. And so in terms of some of the immediate reliefs. Also in this bulletin, coalition of nation builders called as NAPCO trainees back some members of parliament and the cross-section of Ghanaians for the removal of finance minister Ken Ufuriata, accusing him of being insensitive to their plight. So those were your commodities updates. Straight to our very first story. Stakeholders in the industry sector across the country want a review of government's fiscal measures in the 2023 budget in order to ease the cost of production. Well, this is part of recommendations in a pre-budget survey conducted by auditing and accounting firm KPMG. According to the respondents, business expansion must be the government's priority in the next budget. Andy Akuto is head of markets and advisory at KPMG. You realize that generally the cost of production and the cost of doing business has kind of ticked northwest. And people felt that in as much as they recognize that the government itself needs to also continue uh, to mobilize as much revenue, there has to be a trade-off or a balance. And so in terms of some of the immediate reliefs, if you talk of e-levy, it's not like Generally, we didn't get a sense that it is important, but the question is, can it be adjusted downwards uh, to probably get it to, if you like, the pre-E pre levy uh, regime? I, I'm not sure about the numbers, but I believe since its introduction, there's been calls uh, for its adjustment uh, severally. So that is not too surprising. Petroleum levies, is something that should come to us uh, as not a surprise because clearly everyone is feeling the pinch and especially for uh, industries and um, businesses that are located in areas where the energy supply is not so reliable you can imagine buying fuel to, sup to supplement or augment their resources and its impact so again that is something that uh, government ought to pay attention to. We can also talk about, um, for example, the import levies. <laughs> Most importers are crying. Um, suffice it to say that the government, as we hear recently, is trying to focus on supporting local production and entrepreneurship. The fact remains that a lot of the raw materials that go into these production mechanics uh, are still being uh, brought from elsewhere. And therefore, the need to uh, kind of adjust the import levies to meet the expectations of uh, local producers is also something that these business uh, respondents clearly expect. Meanwhile, civil society organization Send Ghana is calling on government to introduce innovative measures to raise revenue for the 2023 budget. Key among them is the introduction of a sugar beverage tax on imported sugar products, which sometimes adversely affects the health of consumers. According to Send Ghana, these products contribute to pressure on health facility, hence the need to raise revenue to support the government. Here is Deputy Country Director for Send Ghana, Dr. Emmanuel Aifa. Thing in terms of revenue generation that we think should be looked at is sugar sweetened beverages tax that people think that it's important to introduce it. One key important factor is that it's going to adversely have 
uh, very good, not adverse places, but going to have very good impact as far as our public health is concerned. Because cigarette sweetened beverages are things that go to affect increased diabetes, obesity, and whatnot. When that happens, it increases the cost of households to healthcare expenditure. It increases also our country's expenditure on healthcare. In the same vein, it also helps them to generate some revenue for the country. The argument that when you flap it, there are a lot of taxes and it's regressive and whatnot. But the research out there in South Africa, in Mexico, in Spain, and about 40 countries that have actually implemented sugar sweetened beverage tax shows that it is not as regressive as we, we people argue to be. It also shows that it increases revenue um, for the country. So that is one thing that we think government should be looking at in terms of revenue. Let's stay a while longer on budget because the agri sector will be one of the major focuses during the minister's presentation as it showed resilience during the pandemic. Joining me via Zoom to outline the expectations ahead of the presentation is the chief executive of Agribusiness Chamber, Anthony Morrison. Um, Anthony, grateful you could join us um, this hour. Really, what are your expectations ahead of the presentation? We do know that we have about three days to go. What are your expectations? Anthony, can you please unmute? And if you could hear me, I'm asking you to tell me what your expectations are ahead of the presentation in three days' time. All right. So, so it seems you are not. Um, Anthony is not getting to me. But let's cross over to the phone lines and speak to the General Agriculture Workers Union Secretary, who is Edward Carriwe, joining me via phone. Um, Mr. Carriwe, grateful you could join us on Business Live. Now, are you optimistic that sector's challenges will be addressed in the budget, 2023 budget, to be specific? And then, um, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I, I'm, I'm not too optimistic that uh, the challenges within the agriculture sector will be addressed in the coming budget. Why? Uh, I'm saying so because uh, the, this budget is going to be an austere budget. Um, whether government has concluded the, the uh, negotiations with the IMF or not, um, they are already having a sense of what IMF will accept in the budget or will not accept in the budget. So I expect this budget to be more austere uh, and it will reflect some conditionalities that uh, IMF will be expecting Ghana government to uh, carry on before they, are, they, they reach a deal. So um, because of that, I, I, I'm not seeing how uh, there will be drastic uh, uh, budgetary allocation to uh, agriculture, increased investment, and so on. More importantly, when the Ministry of Agriculture consistently, you know, touts the Plant for Food and Jobs program to be a success. So if it is a success, uh, then it means that uh, in the midst of scarcity, where the government does not have enough resources, uh, I expect that the government direction will be in another area, uh, not more on agriculture. In another area, um, what do you mean by that? Yeah, you know, the, there are these uh, steps that the that, that, that are already been implemented by government to say that, look, we are going to uh, constrain forest uh, availability to some importers like rice, uh, poultry products, and so on. They will see that as a, an opportunity uh, for the agricultural sector because they think that once they constrain the import um, of these uh, uh, foodstuffs, then the agriculture will automatically uh, pick up. Um, we are also 
aware that the the Ministry of Agriculture is working around to get maize, more maize imported. And then I've heard that uh, they are trying to import GMO maize. So um, I'm not, I, I just cannot see where government would concentrate more resources into agriculture beyond these uh, things that are uh, 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 Bits of policies that we are we are we are we are we are seeing coming up. All right, so uh, Mr. Curry, will hold the line on for me, and let me try and see if I could get Anthony Morrison to um, speak to the issues for me. Um, hoping that his connection is better. Anthony, can you hear me? And if you can, what, in your view, is government not doing right? Anthony, can you hear me? All right, so it seems we are having some difficulty reaching out to Anthony. In... All right, so Edward, let, let, let me put this to you. For you, you are casting, um, you, are, you, are, you are so much sure that government would invest, you know, much more into the agriculture sector. What do you think government is not doing right, Edward Carriwe? What government is not doing is uh, right is to um, assure us that uh, come 2023, the food situation would improve, particularly prices of uh, food stuff will come down. Because in government's own opinion, uh, which is uh, eloquently touted by the ministry, is that the uh, increase in food, uh, in food prices is as a result of profiteering. And once it's as a result of profiteering, you, they don't need to do more uh, anything about that. What they can do is to ensure that uh, cut off uh, the profiteering, and uh, there will not be a budgetary measure to deal with that because the Ministry of Agriculture is attempting to do that, which, in actual fact, is uh, it's not a viable solution, though. So they will continue with that uh, 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 mindset and then uh, direction. So, uh, but what they need to do if they listen to me, is that they need to assure all of us that um, come 2023, prices will come down, and then they, will, they are implementing uh, positive and direct measures like increasing budgetary allocation to boost uh, maize production, to boost uh, rice production, to boost uh, soybean production, and so on. Uh, 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 this is what I would expect them to do. But... You, you, you sometimes have to measure your expectations with uh, the, the trend over the period. Uh, and if you look at the trend over the period, you see that uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure that government will do what we expect them to do. Now, Mr. Kariwa, let me find this quickly from you in about 10 seconds. Um, your union is of great interest when it comes to, you know, agriculture sector. Were you consulted in any way? No, we have not been consulted. You know, we also belong to the TUC, and um, there's this general uh, policy uh, direction that uh, they will invite institutions to bring their proposals to the ministry. And if TUC is standing anything, they will, and they include agricultural sector, then that is it. But the union directly has not been invited to mm. make input into where the budget as to what they can do to address the challenges within the agricultural sector. Very well. Thank you very much. Edward Kariwe, he is the General Secretary of the General Agriculture Workers Union, sharing his perspective with us ahead of the 2023 budget. Still to come, though, on Business Life, Coalition of Nation Builders call trainees back some members of parliament and a cross-section of Ghanaians for the removal of Finance Minister Ken Oforiata, accusing him of being insensitive to their plights. Hello there, you're still watching Business Life with me, Pius Kujobaka. To one of our headline stories, and the Coalition of Nation Builders Core Trainees have thrown its support behind some members of parliament and a cross-section of Ghanaians for the removal of Finance Minister Ken Ufuriata. In a statement, the coalition claimed that the Finance Minister has been insensitive to the plight of NAPCO trainees. It expressed surprise that Mr. Ufuriata released 25 million cities for the construction of a national cathedral when NAPCO trainees were owed 10 months allowance. Frank Kwanza is the National Secretary of the Coalition and joins us 
on phone for more. Grateful Frank, you could join us on Business Life. Why are you asking for the resignation of Finance Minister Ken Furiata? And of course, basing your argument on the fact that some 25 million cities um, was pumped into the National Cathedral, for which reason you're calling for his resignation. Is that enough? Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to avail our sentiments, the general public, government, and the media as a whole. Yes, indeed, the press statement was released by coalition of NACO trainees, and we support the removal of Kenneth Oriata on the factual grounds that at the time we were in a state of hunger and shock and starving to death. At the time, we were subjected to incessant public ridicule. At the time, we were demonstrating and spelling out our grievances, sentiments, and plight. The finance minister never responded. In fact, we organized numerous of demonstrations. We have petitioned the NAPCO secretariat. We have petitioned the office of the president, but we didn't get any tangible response from them. We, we are subjected to incessant public radical. At the time we were starving, he released 25 million US dollars into the construction of National Cathedral. At the time we were on the street demonstrating, registering our displeasure, Mr. Kenofreata released an amount to charter a private debt for, the, for President Akufado. So, uh, <laughs> it is clear that, it is clear indication that the finance minister does not have NACO trainees at heart. The priority of a uh, finance minister is not NACO beneficiaries. The actions and inactions indicate that he is not ready to release funds for the payment of NACO beneficiaries. As I speak to you now, we have been left in limbo. We are going through excruciative hardship. We think that the finance minister is insensitive and is not ready to release funds for NAPCO beneficiaries. Upon all the reckless borrowing, he decided to ignore NAPCO trainees. So we think that the finance minister should be sacked. That is why we released that statement Yesterday, sir. All right, so Frank, um, clearly, um, as it stands now, we do know that the fate of the finance minister hangs in the balance because uh, parliament would have to debate it and vote. Now, either ways, if it appears that it doesn't go your way, that is, you looking forward to his sack, what becomes of your coalition? Well, what we are going to do if he's not stuck, we will petition the Speaker of Parliament. We will petition the Speaker of Parliament to compel, to compel Mr. Kenofreata to pay our money for us. What all what we are demanding is our money. Because we believe that if Mr. Kenofreata is still in power, is still in office, our money is not going to be paid. So if uh, he is not removed, we shall petition the Speaker of Parliament in the coming days. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing that, but how far are you willing to go? Come again, sir. I am asking that how far are you willing to go? Beyond the petitioning the Speaker of Parliament, how far are you willing to go? Yes, we, we believe that if we petition the Speaker of Parliament, we, you know, we start do a mini demonstration at the same time petition the Speaker of Parliament. So we believe that definitely uh, if we petition the Speaker of Parliament, our money uh, is going to be paid. Very well. Frank Kwanza is the National Secretary of the Coalition of Nation Builders Corps trainees speaking to us there. Let's move away from that and touch on the stories and players in the hospitality industry are lamenting the difficulty in keeping graduates from tertiary institutions. They say many products from the hospitality trading institutions refuse non-managerial positions and are not suitable for available jobs. Now the trend, they say, is difficult and costly to manage and is affecting customer patronage. The Ghana Hotels Association, Ashanti Region, is currently reviewing policies to provide career growth opportunities and a healthy working environment for staff in the industry. There's more in this report.
The Tourism Federation says the cost of finding, hiring and training new staff is affecting the industry. Regional Chairman of the Federation, David Unina, says the lack of the sector-specific skilled workers is affecting customers. He says the Ghana Hotel Association is liaising with academia to bridge the gap. He was speaking at a two-day workshop to review advocacy strategies and action plans for the industry. We like to liaise with the institutions, the universities and the polytechnics and other, so that they will produce the requisites or the, the materials that we want. Therefore, when they come, we don't have to train them. It's as a result of training them with some of the hotels saying that, why should I invest in a person who will leave? But when we, we, they are already trained, when you come, we give them a small orientation, they will remain in the industry. And we are also going to ensure that the, uh, the tourism players motivate and then um, 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 good, good remuneration to these um, workers. Academia has been faulted for producing half-baked graduates for the hospitality sector, but lack of infrastructure in hospitality-related tertiary institutions has been identified as a barrier preventing lecturers from imbibing the requisite skills in students. Lecturer at the Akentenapia Minka University of Skills Training and Entrepreneurial Development, Nafisa Salam, says this accounts for the poor work attitude of some graduates. But you know, we have others who are not serious. And then because we don't have, the facilities has been the same since time immemorial. You see, the facility was uh, built with maybe a number of students in mind, like 10, uh, 50, 40. But looking at the number of students we have now, we even go to the practical, some hide behind others. And they don't do anything. So when such people go out into the industry, it becomes a problem. They are not able to do anything. So the industry players rather called us, uh, having misunderstanding with us for not teaching the uh, students what is expected of them. The two-day workshop is an initiative of the Pathway for Sustainable Employment for Women and Youth. Organized in collaboration with the Ghana Hotels Association, it is aimed at improving working conditions for people and employers in the tourism value chain. Charles Kusi Apiakubi is facilitator. Some of the findings we had in an earlier engagement. So today we're able to identify that there are more to be done to enhance the growth of the industry. And so far uh, we're pushing to the next level, which is the implementation. Mona Lisa Frimpon reporting. And that's our program for tonight. I am Pius Kujubaka. Always a pleasure serving you. Do enjoy the rest of our programs. For more news, hand it along on to my job.